My name is Victor Yapiskurte. I'm coming from the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care of the local uh, University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Chisinau, Moldova. Uh, in fact, I'm an uh, anesthesiologist um, that uh, is being passionate uh, about data science, uh, machine learning and related fields and uh, even is trying to use the advances uh, of these fields for clinical purpose. And because I have pre-recorded uh, my uh, presentation, uh, I will uh, play the presentation, meanwhile, uh, getting ready uh, for questions. As you may have already inferred from the title, my presentation will focus on signal processing, but let's uh, find out what is meant by a less traditional approach to this task. Here on the screen, and I will start with some triviality, uh, you can see a number of uh, traces as well as some numerical parameters. In fact, uh, these are multimodal time series representing physiological parameters that are routinely monitored in an intensive care unit. What can we do with this uh, data? First of all, we can visualize it and use for uh, diagnosis and treatment. Second, uh, can be using this data for more complex tests, like, for instance, machine learning, uh, but with the same goal, uh, computer-assisted decisions. For this, we will need to extract features for, from the data to obtain shared representation and finally uh, pass this uh, transformed data to a machine learning algorithm. In the framework of this research, uh, we are building a yearly sepsis prediction system. By yearly, uh, I mean uh, four hours, at least four hours before sepsis uh, can be confirmed using regular clinical tools. The current research uh, uses uh, data coming from a 2019 challenge, yearly prediction of sepsis from clinical data, that uh, comprises uh, over 40,000 uh, clinical cases, set A and set B, coming from two uh, distinct US hospitals, uh, this uh, data uh, include uh, 40 parameters uh, like vital science, laboratory indices, etc. 1.5 million time windows and over uh, 10 million data points. And uh, as the set A contains uh, much less missing data, it was selected for further processing. Here we can see the appearance of this data, but what really counts is uh, selecting the data with the highest discriminatory uh, properties uh, in order to uh, build uh, subsequently the uh, machine learning system. Uh, experimenting with different sets of uh, data, uh, parameters, different parameters, we uh, came to uh, a final set of parameters that are presented on the screen, including heart rate, oxygen saturation, systolic blood pressure, diastolic pressure, respiratory rate and temperature. Uh, speaking about tools we are using for this, uh, they can be grouped as per the screen, first of all, uh, coming from the R programming language, including Shiny package for building web applications, uh, H2O platform for machine learning, all from language for, for some verification aspects, and finally, Python programming environment, including H2O Wave, a recent uh, package, for building uh, the final version of the application for the clinical use. Speaking about transforming or preparing the data for machine learning, uh, we are using a quite uh, unusual uh, method, uh, like block decomposition method, as the technique for extracting features from raw data. Uh, this uh, method comes from the uh, field of algorithmic information dynamics, uh, which is an emerging field of complexity science based on uh, algorithmic information theory and uh, particularly on the concept of Kolmogorov-Chaitin complexity. 
Here on the screen in the middle, we have the uh, mathematical representation of this uh, approach, uh, where by uh, KT is the complexity of the string S that is the length of the shortest program P that outputs this string S running on an universal Turing machine. Uh, more, uh, BDM as a method is the core of a special tool for providing reliable estimations to uncomputable functions, namely the online algorithmic uh, complexity calculator that can be accessed using the address on the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you have uh, one of the papers uh, where these aspects are described in details. Speaking about block decomposition method, you can see the mathematical representation of this method. And as you can see, it is based on the coding theorem method. Uh, by which we can uh, calculate the complexity of small blocks and for this method we are dividing a larger object in small blocks, calculating complexity of these blocks and summing these complexities, uh, unique values first of all, and the logarithmic representation of the repeated values, we will get uh, the final value of the complexity of this large object. Just to illustrate, using a jokey image, a self-operating napkin, uh, which in fact uh, is a quite sophisticated machinery, but uh, useless machinery, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we can uh, divide all this machinery into smaller blocks, calculating the complexity of these separate blocks, and finally summing uh, the results, and we will get the overall complexity of the uh, whole machinery. <clears throat> data pro uh, processing using BDM uh, supposes uh, preparing the data in a special manner. First of all, original data needs to be uh, reshaped in 3x3 matrices with physiological parameter values as per the screen, where rows are uh, for uh, parameters and uh, columns for parameters values in three subsequent samples. Then we will uh, binarize this data using the uh, as threshold, the mean uh, value per row. And finally, using the calculator, we'll, we can uh, estimate the uh, algorithmic complexity of such a matrix that uh, represents or encodes the conditions of a certain uh, body uh, system or function. And we also uh, need the difference of uh, respective parameters value between two consecutive hours for three hours to come finally to uh, the vectors that or the vector that will be provided to the machine learning algorithm. As you can see, we have here a 14 uh, element vector with uh, two uh, cells for uh, the complexity and V1 to V12 uh, for the difference of the six uh, parameters. And all this uh, looks uh, in the uh, final format, like on the screen, where we have an additional uh, column for uh, labeling the samples, zero for sepsis and uh, for non-sepsis uh, samples and one for sepsis samples. Uh, and our final uh, set used for machine learning consists uh, of uh, the training set with 5,157 samples as well as the test set with 909 samples. Uh, this uh, set is, uh, had been passed to a number of algorithms. Uh, the best one proved to be the machine uh, boost, uh, gradient boosting machine. Uh, and uh, here on the screen we have the performance of this uh, model uh, by the area under the curve and you can notice that it is uh, slightly over 92%. The same uh, metric uh, slightly uh, presented in slightly a different uh, format, the confusion matrix plot. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to mention that at the very beginning uh, we have replicated one of the state of the art uh, systems in this field for sepsis prediction, uh, namely inside uh, system. We replicated it in our language and later one used as a benchmark while building uh, our own uh, system. Uh, here you can see the uh, performance uh, metric uh, for these two systems and uh, it, it 
uh, can be uh, is evident that they are uh, quite close. The difference is in recall, where our system is 2% uh, better, and specificity, uh, where our system is 1% uh, lower. Uh, and now I will uh, switch to another screen and uh, show you uh, an application, a practical application. In fact, it's a demo uh, version of this uh, application uh, we uh, uh, are uh, using for um, exemplifying uh, what we can um, do uh, with uh, this uh, data uh, prepared in su such a way. Okay, let's uh, look at the application. Uh, I would like you uh, to take a look at the uh, center, uh, upper part of the screen, where we have an Excel-like uh, uh, table, uh, where uh, we have the six parameters of interest. And in fact, a doctor or a nurse will need uh, to input uh, every hour uh, the uh, value of these uh, parameters. Let's uh, do it uh, right uh, away. Uh, heart rate, for instance, 87, uh, saturation uh, 98, temperature 38, uh, systolic blood pressure 115, uh, diastolic blood pressure uh, 70. Three and respiratory rate 28. Uh, we will need to input uh, for three times uh, at least, for three consecutive uh, hours. For this we uh, can add uh, for the future uh, inputs additional rows. It's done quite easily. Uh, and once we have such three uh, uh, rows with data, we can ask the system to uh, estimate uh, the risk. But what else we can do with this uh, uh, application? Here we have a list of pre-selected cases, uh, and I will be using one of them, is a real patient, and we can um, display the data of this patient uh, where the uh, um, columns are uh, for parameters and the rows denoting uh, all the observations. We also can visualize this data as plots and you can see that our patient uh, is for the uh, seven hours already in the intensive care uh, unit and uh, finally we can uh, process the data and get prognosis. Uh, the prognosis will be for the last observation and in this case is a high uh, sepsis uh, risk uh, and we also can uh, estimate uh, and plot the uh, dynamic of uh, this prognosis uh, during the patient's stay in the intensive care unit and let's do it uh, right now dynamic prognosis and plotting this uh, prognosis looks like on the screen at the bottom uh, you can see that at the beginning the patient had a low risk zero risk and all of a sudden uh, it became a high uh, risk um, it means that uh, starting this point in time, only uh, after four uh, or around four hours, uh, regular clinical tools will be able to confirm the diagnosis. We can uh, not wait uh, so long and uh, we will need to start the antibiotic therapy uh, according to uh, uh, this uh, data we are getting from the um, application. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Uh, let me uh, switch to an another screen just uh, to continue. Just a moment. Okay, I hope you can see my uh, uh, new screen. Do you? Yes. Good, thank you. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, once again, what uh, is meant here by less traditional? Uh, this is uh, using Kolmogorov complexity as the method of encoding the state of uh, body system or function, and as well as a technique for data processing and data representation. I uh, exemplified uh, this by uh, my presentation. And uh, the final goal of all this uh, activity is building up a system for yearly sepsis prediction for clinical use. We are uh, at the moment uh, at the uh, beginning uh, stage of this uh, journey. 
And uh, now maybe uh, there are questions. <laughs> 